Hello and welcome to the start of chapter 4 in our fire team series. In this chapter we're covering how to do the scoring mechanics and displaying the scores to the players in the game. So in this first episode we'll be taking a look at behind the scenes in our game states and game modes and player states that keep track of our individual player scores and team scores. So let's jump straight in. So welcome back to the fourth chapter in our fire team series and we're going to go first of all look at our online game state and online game mode so the game mode is run by the server and they control basically when a game starts and ends and so on and so forth where the game state is something that we want to measure and keep track of the game as it's going um and this is a great location to keep things such as scoring okay so it's on the game state we'll be doing this now different game modes will have different game oh, sorry different game types will have different rules for what counts as a score so for example a deathmatch kill would be a point whereas a capture the flag capture will be a point instead so it does have to vary so what we're going to do is we're going to build a generic system inside our online game state so that when we make children of it because we can also make children of these game states we can easily dictate what constitutes a point so let's go first of all into our online game state now in our online game state we need to set up a couple of key custom events the first one we're going to have is going to be called add player point and this player point here needs to know the player id and the score that they're being added to so we go to inputs integer and call it player id and we're going to have the score so the player id is a value that's assigned to the player controller and player state so everyone has got a unique id and that's how we're keeping track of the individual scores now to keep track of scoring we are going to have to have a some sort of variable on here and in this case we'll be using a map so we go to variables and we're going to do a map called player scoreboard and that's going to be a load of integers it be the ids as keys and then the values will also be integers because that be the values of scores so it'd be an integer an integer map so on the player here we're going to take out a player uh, player scoreboard here and we're going to try and find the any existing uh player id on here so find player id and just give some space here um we're then going to take the find value of this and going to add it to the score so that plus the score value and we're then going to take this player scoreboard and add ooh, to it so we're going to plug that into there and uh, so this top one here will be the player id we want to add to this scoreboard which is going to come from player id and this bottom one here will be the number which is coming from here okay and that is it to keep track of the score in a scoreboard and there's various things we can do as well like when we come to sourcing and filtering the scoreboard uh, but once we've done that we need to tell it to say to the game hey the score has been updated update any ui or tell the game mode to check to see if the game is over so that's handled by an event dispatcher we go to event dispatcher and call on score updated and this thing is going to have an input and it's going to have the scoreboard we'll call it player scoreboard and we'll make that a map of integer and integers compile it and then drag it into your thing here and do call and you can just drag in your player scoreboard like so okay so you've got add player point when you call this one it's going to add it to the scoreboard and then the scoreboard is going to be put back to anything that's been told to listen to it for example our game mode and also any ui <clears throat> so alongside that there could also be team game mode so we need to in team deathmatch for example we need to assign teams to this and this works pretty much the same way we can add another custom event and this will be add team uh, point and much like the player one we're going to have a team id and a score uh, make that singular and a score 
And yeah, the rest of it is pretty much exactly the same. So we're just going to drag and copy pretty much all of this. Paste that back in. But obviously, rather than updating the player scoreboard, we want to update a team scoreboard. So on the variables, we're going to make another variable in here called team scoreboard. And we're going to switch that out for our player one there. So the team goes down to there. We're going to find the team ID. And then we're going to go add to there and score there. Now we also need to report back our team scoreboard. So go to your score and score updated event dispatcher, add a new variable, and this will be your team scoreboard. And again, that'd be integer as a map. So an integer. I'm just going to plug in team scoreboard into that one as well. And don't forget to put it into the add player one too. Not a big deal if it isn't because theoretically you should be in a uh, uh, every player against themselves um, mode but just in case to put it in there okay and this is a generic adding points to your game and as I said we call these points individually separately on children modes on here okay so that's the online game state setup uh, we now need to set up the player state to um, take on this scoring as well we want the player to know their own score so every player knows their own score and the game state keeps track of every player score. So let's go into online player state. And in here we've got gain kill ready. We're going to make another one called gain score. And this is going to have an input for how much score we want to gain on it. Okay, so in our variables we do have personal score ready set up. Uh, we're going to make this uh, replicated. So we're going to go to right hand side, replication, do replicated. I'm going to drag that out and uh, get. I'm going to add the score to it. And we're going to set it back to our value there. Okay, and then we have to tell it, tell the game state, hey, we were updated as well. So we're going to get game state. And the game state is accessible by all players so this works just fine cast to online game state but you can't do it with the game mode so you have to do it through the game state and from online game state we're going to do add player point and there's player id i'm going to put it in here I'm going to drag out do player id which is part of the game uh, player state already default one and the score we're going to add is going to come from our score here just going to add a couple of reroute nodes in here to keep it a bit more organized. And plug that into score there. Okay, and that is it for gain score. Uh, and that's in keeping track of individual scores. So if, for example, uh, the player captured the flag, you just call gain score and they'll capture the flag. Now, speaking of that, we're going to have to tell that on our game state. And the game state we made here is a generic one. We're going to make a child one of it. And then we can define the specific rule of that game type when the player scores a point. So let's go to our online game state. Right click, create child blueprint class. And this will be deathmatch game state. Open this up. And because it's a child, all you have to do on here is go to functions. And in this case, for the deathmatch, we can just do on the kill announced. This will return back who the killer was and who the victim was. We we're particularly interested in the killer. Um, we still want to do the same stuff. So we do have to add the call to parent function by right clicking add call to parent function. And plugging that all in. And then we are going to take this killer here. And we're going to uh, probably have to cast to our online gate player state. There we go. And then from there, do gain score. Okay, and we're going to gain one point. Okay, so that will gain score on the player side, on their player state. Then the game state will update, and that will replicate to everyone as well. Um, and then that will then shout out to the game mode to determine whether the game's over. 
So let's go to the game mode to determine that. And that is done via the main menu and go to online game mode. Okay, so online game mode. We need to keep track of when should the game be over. Okay, um, which is obviously quite important. Have I got it in here yet? Mm, no. Okay, so uh, we need to know when it, the game should be ending. So what is the win threshold for the game? So in here on the online game mode, you're going to add a new variable and we're going to do win threshold. So this is how many points the player need or team need in order to win. So you know, integer, compile, put in 25 here by default. Um, and then we are going to do um winning player id and then we also probably want winning team id like so and uh what else mm, that may be it i think okay that'll do for now now game mode knows when to end a match through a function and that function is an override and you'll see it in there called ready to end match. So in here is basically constantly checking to see whether or not the match should be ended. So in here we're going to do get game state and we're cast to online game state. Plug all this in. And then we're going to take the online game state and get the player scoreboard. Okay. And if we need to know what one we're using, whether the player uh, scoreboard or the team scoreboard, we're going to need a Boolean to switch between the two. So I've got to add that to variable. Let's add that in there. Boolean and do is team type. And we'll drag that out and do a switch. Uh, select, sorry. Select. And we want the one with the yellow arrows. There we are. So if it's a team type, false will be the player scoreboard. And true will be the team scoreboard. Get team scoreboard. And plug that in. We then need to cycle through them and see if any of them have gone above the threshold or reached the threshold. So. We're going to take out our return value here and get the keys. So all the player ID is basically in the game. And in here, we're going to drag out and do a for each loop. <clears throat> okay, uh, so now we're just going to do a find. So available here, we we'll do a find in the map. And the map is obviously going to be our return value from our select here. And we're going to check to see if any of these values are greater than or equal to the win threshold. So let's type in the win threshold into there. And that will go into a branch. So if it's true, it means someone's won. And if it has ended and we have want to record who's won, we do need to pick a uh, winning team ID and winner player ID. So we're going to take out our winner player ID and do, oh, sorry, set. Plug that into true. And down here, we do select int. And basically, the Boolean here can be whether or not this is a team type mode. So drag in team type. And if it is true and it is a team type, A here is going to be mi minus one. So it can be like a null value. But B is going to be the ID that's found in the array element. And likewise for winning team type ID. Drag that out, put that in there, and if it is a team type, A is going to be the team ID, and B is going to be negative one. And put that into, oh, sorry, not there, sorry. Um, yeah, no, we'll put it into there, and then we'll tick this. Okay, I mean, when you tick it, it means that's the end of the match, and it will end the game. Okay, if it uh, however it does get to the end of that for loop uh, with no change in it, no return, 
then we do a return node here as well and leave that as false therefore it doesn't end the game yet okay so it's constantly looking at those scores so in order for the game uh deathmatch game state to be used we need to tell it to use a certain game mode um so we're going to go into our game mode and go create child blueprint class and call it deathmatch game mode and here we define the unique things about deathmatch game mode which basically all it is is just making sure the win threshold is 25 and it's not a team deathmatch time so leave that false simple as that and there will be other stuff we'll add on to this later on when we get further through the project uh, but for now this is all we need to do compile save and if i go back now to my mode selection uh, in my data folder game modes here i've got a mode path for deathmatch i'm going to go into here and select the, the mode path that i want to use which will be i go to systems deathmatch game mode copy reference and we're going to paste it in here instead and we just don't want the quote marks or the final dot deathmatch game mode and we don't want the first blueprint apostrophe mark either okay so it's just game slash system slash deathmatch game mode it's just the path where they can find the game mode uh, and that's it and save and you do it the same for team deathmatch and king of the hill um, but that will do and there we go we've now got our scoreboard stuff set up ready behind the scenes ready for our widget to be displayed speaking of widgets in the next episode we'll be creating our scoreboard widget which is displayed in the bottom corner of our screen whilst in game and can see our current score but also who is in first and second place in during the match so you can catch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash ryan laley where you can watch all my videos early before everyone else from just one dollar a month massive thank you to all my patrons and youtube members for the continued support it really is amazing thank you again so much if you like what i do and want to subscribe hit that little subscribe button and i'll see you next time bye everyone i'm ready to play now put me in the game now i came here to prove it i'm ready to do it i can't be afraid now put me on the stage now i'm ready to rage now i feel like an animal stuck in a cage and i'm ready to break out my time, my time None of you people can tell me to stop This time like the last time